Today we will create a Surrealism art project. Surrealism is an art movement that started in the 1920s. The art is based on fantasy and the world of dreams. One of the most famous Surrealist artists was a man named Salvador Dali from Spain. His most famous work, The Persistence of Memory, is located in New York City and is worth about $150 million. Let's create a room in perspective and turn it into Surrealism art. We'll begin by using a piece of paper, a pencil, and a ruler. I will also be using Sharpie and some colored markers or crayons as well, along with some magazines, scissors, and glue. I'm going to start off by taking my ruler and putting it diagonally on my paper and drawing very light lines with my pencil. I'm trying not to push down too hard with my pencil so that my lines are nice and light. I will be erasing some of these lines later, so I don't want to press down too hard yet. In the center of my X that I've made will be a dot. This is going to be my vanishing point for my room. Next, I'm going to start at each corner and I'm going to measure an equal distance from the corner. It doesn't really matter what you choose. For me, I'm going to use four inches as my measurement. It depends on the size of paper. If you use a larger paper, you may want to do a larger number, um, or you could also do a smaller number as well, like three inches would work just fine too. But whatever you choose, you want to make sure to do the exact same number on all of your diagonal lines, starting from the corner in towards the center of the paper. This is going to be define the back wall of our project. I'm going to go ahead and use a Sharpie now so that you can see my lines, but feel free to continue using pencil if you would like. I switched to a little bit of a smaller ruler so that I can move around easily. I'm gonna go ahead and connect these dots that I drew four inches in from my corners to make a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be the back wall of my room. So if you had chosen some shorter lines or shorter dots from the corners, then your back uh, wall would be larger. Just depends on how big or little you want your room to be. This is the back wall of my room. Now it's all ready to go. I still have that center dot as my vanishing point, and I'm gonna use that to help do some of the rest of my drawing here. So for the floor lines, I'm going to start at the corner of my back wall and connect it to the corner of my paper. And this is gonna be the floor of my room. I thought it would be a little bit more interesting to make a checkered floor or a tiled floor. So I'm gonna start in the very center uh, where my dot is and then down from my paper and I'm going to make a vertical line from the back wall down to the bottom of my paper. And then I'm also going to be using my vanishing point to make some other lines along my floor. So I'm going to pick a spot right in between my two lines here on either side and I'm going to go ahead and connect those dots to my vanishing point. So I'm always matching up my ruler with my vanishing point and then wherever I'm drawing my line. Here's another line that's going down towards the bottom for my floor and I will do one on the other side as well. So you can see that these lines on my floor all go toward my vanishing point in the center of my paper. Now I want this to be a tiled floor, so I need to make some horizontal lines as well. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball where my straight lines will be. 
and I'm going to use my ruler to draw some horizontal lines across the floor of my room. Now I have a checkerboard type pattern or tiled floor that I will be able to color in later. Now they should get a little bit larger as they get closer. You, so you can see my first horizontal lines are closer together, but the one that I did last is a little bit farther apart. Next I wanna do lines to separate the ceiling from the side walls of my room. That would be adding diagonal lines to the top corners here of my paper. Notice all of the lines go to my vanishing point. Now here is my basic box for my room. I've got the tiled floor, I've got two side walls, my ceiling, and my back wall. All of the different parts are nice and ready. Basically a black box that I can fill in, a blank box that I can fill in. All right, so the things I wanna think about now are what I wanna to use to fill up my room and I'm gonna mostly be focusing on the outside edges. I'm gonna start with the ceiling and some type of light. Um, so some options that you have for lighting would be just to make kind of a round light that's coming down and a round light in perspective would be more oval shape. So something like this would be very simple to do. That would be hanging up. Another idea would be to make a rectangular light, but for that case, you would have to draw the bottom line and then attach the vanishing point to connect with the side like so, and do both sides there connecting to the vanishing point and then do the top line. So a rectangular light on the, the ceiling would look like that. Those are two options. Another option that you could do coming down from the ceiling would be to make some type of like elegant lighting like a chandelier. So I might start with an oval to connect the chandelier to the ceiling. And then you can make whatever type of shape you want for the chandelier on the bottom. So I'm just keeping it kind of simple, making some J type shapes and adding little lights Chandeliers come in all different shapes and sizes, so feel free to have fun with your lighting on this one. That would hang down like that. Any one of those would be good examples. Uh, I think on mine I'm going to do recess lighting. So recess lighting are these little circle lights that are kind of up in the ceiling. And to do recess lighting, I'm going to decide kind of where I want my light to go. I'm going to start off with just the side of it. And I think I'm gonna make two lights. So they need to be in perspective and they need to go with each other. So I'm making my dots kind of as guidelines. So my first one is gonna be an oval right about here. I want about that width. Then my second one has to be in perspective. So I'm matching up the sides, making a little mark so I know how big to make that oval. That way it'll look like it's coming towards me. On the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So my first one is about this wide, should match my first one on the other side. And then my second one needs to be in perspective. So I'm kind of looking at where my other one is. I'm gonna make the little dots to show how wide it needs to be using my vanishing point as a reference. And then I'll connect them. So if you'd like to do recessed lighting, this is a way you can do that. I'm choosing to do just four of those lights for now on my picture. Now I wanna focus on my walls. And so some things I can add to my walls would be doors, windows, art, things like that. So I'm gonna start off with a door. And to make a door, I'm gonna start with a vertical line. And then I'm gonna use my vanishing point and match it up with the edge of my line and make a line for the top part of the door. And then the other side of the door is also going to be a vertical line. 
and that will create a nice door frame. I can throw a door knob on there or some other type of fun door handle. Now I'm ready for something else. I think next to my door, I'm just gonna have a piece of art hanging on the wall. So I like to start with my inside line and then I'm gonna go down to my vanishing point and connect it with the edge of my line here and the top of my line up here so that it's in perspective. And then I will connect those lines with a vertical line to create a piece of art on the wall. Now I also have a back wall and another side wall that I can fill with other things. So maybe over on this side, I will have some windows. I can go ahead and start by making vertical line. And then I'm going to, again, connect with my vanishing point. And I'll add one, two lines here for the tops of the windows. And then I'm gonna do the bottom of the windows by adding two kind of dashed lines here. And then I will use vertical lines to close the window shapes here. So I have to kind of adjust it, make sure that my ruler is vertical. I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides of the windows. Now you could get a lot fancier. You could add window frames using the same method. You could add curtains. You could add window panels on the inside of the windows. I think I'm just gonna do a line in the center of the window to show that maybe it can open and close along the middle here. Like that. On the back wall, I wanna do something as well. And I thought it would be nice to have just like a giant piece of artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a very large rectangle and the nice thing about when you are drawing on the back wall is you do not need to do it in perspective because you're looking at it square on. So I do not need to worry about the vanishing point as I am making shapes on the back wall. You could do a gallery wall, maybe make a couple different paintings hanging up on the back wall. Um, it's up to you. I'm just making one giant one. I thought that would be kind of fun, almost a mural size painting. Now that I have all of my basic shapes of my room um, on the walls, on the back, on the ceiling, and on the floor, uh, I'm gonna add a couple little details still with my Sharpie before I decide to color. And the first thing I'm gonna do is work on this back picture here. I thought it would be fun maybe to have kind of like a giant wave, maybe even inspired by um, the giant wave painting by Hokusai. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a giant wave and add curved lines in here. But you could do whatever you want on this back wall. You could add posters, you could add uh, more windows. Maybe you want like a lot of natural light in your room. You could add another doorway, a closet, kind of whatever you would like. So this is my giant wave. I might even put some little distant mountains or something back in here behind the wave, just for some kind of land. But yeah, it really doesn't matter. So whatever you wanna do for your artwork. And then I also have this painting on the side here. So I'm gonna throw in some type of art on the side maybe this is a little pot and then that i've got some fun little flowers or something just trying to come up with different details to add now notice that i have not drawn any furniture i don't have any tables i don't have any beds or shelves and for this project, doing this surrealism art, um, I'm not going to add anything actually sitting on the floor. I'm only doing things on the walls because I will be adding some objects in with my magazine pictures. 
Um, it also is kind of a little bit tricky to do all of those objects in perspective. So that's something that maybe I can do another time on another project. But for now, I am just doing an empty room, uh, except for things that are on the walls, ceiling, or floor. All right, at this point, I have drawn what I want to draw, and now I'm going to add some color. When I finish coloring my room, my walls, my floor, my ceiling, I'm going to look through some magazines and find some interesting images that I think might work for my picture. Notice that when I cut out my images, I cut right next to them so that there's no background showing. Even my pretzel, I cut out the little holes in between the pretzel. So I'm gonna see how I could use these images to make a surreal picture. Things that wouldn't necessarily make sense in this room or would be kind of odd looking. So this guy is pretty big. He would definitely be weird and he's kind of standing in a really weird position. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I wanna use him cause he's a little bit big for my picture. Um, this bubble gum machine though would fit pretty nicely. It's big, but it's not so big that it covers up like my whole picture. A volleyball kind of randomly hanging in the, in the sky would be kind of interesting. I've got this like doctor cat, um, also kind of interesting. This giant pretzel maybe could be coming out of the door, hanging down from the ceiling. I don't know, maybe I can kind of trim it a little bit to make it fit a little bit better. I do like to find if there's a straight edge of a picture that it's like uh, either coming off of one of the sides or the ceiling or the floor. The same thing with the cat, how the bottom is straight. So I'm going to make him kind of coming off from the bottom. I also have this cow, which is quite large. Maybe he could be hanging out next to the cat or I could just use part of him. Maybe I will actually just cut out the head of the cow and leave the body behind because it's such a large image. Um, I can kind of adjust that. So some of it takes a little bit of playing to see like what pictures work where and you know, I don't wanna cover up all of the work that I did on putting my room into perspective. So 
you want to kind of at least be able to see some of your hard work with that as well. I like the head. It's still kind of big and awkward and I don't want to cover up too many things. Maybe I can kind of play around with moving things around. And then when I get to a point where I've got exactly what I want on my picture, I can go ahead and glue it down. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with this a little bit and see if I can come up with a way that I will use it. All right, you can see I ended up cutting the cow's head in half and having him kind of peeking off the side there. I've glued all of this down. I moved the volleyball over to overlap the pretzel and then I've also added a border piece of paper as well. All of these are, are glued nicely to my picture and it is a very surreal work of art. Thanks for working with this working on this with me today and I hope to see you again soon on my channel Elkie Art.